Recently, I released a video talking about the solar energy system I use while camping in Kujabaquak National Park. And one of the comments I had towards the end of the video was that I had wished the Bluetti company, the products of whom I was using, would come out with a waterproof solar panel. It was really the only weak link in the system that I had. Well, interestingly enough, shortly after returning home, I was contacted by the company Bouge RV, and they offered to send me one of their products. So what did I choose? The Yuma flexible waterproof solar panel. If you're interested in hearing my thoughts on this unit, keep watching. All right, just before we get into detail about the Yuma solar panel, I just wanted to let you know that when Bouge RV did reach out to me, they offered me four products that I could choose from for review. Three of them were solar panels, which was great. All three had waterproof characteristics, something I was definitely on the market for. The first choice for me was one that were, were solar panels that were semi-flexible, not anywhere near as flexible as the Yuma that I'll be demonstrating in a few moments time. Only reason being is because it was what I thought would be better suited to the type of camping that I'm doing. Having looked at the Yuma, I felt that this had a more, how should I say, uh, specified or specialized application, and it does, but I'll explain that in a moment. So it was the semi-flexible ones that I was interested. However, they did not have any in the 200 watt models that I was most interested in. And uh, rather than take two 100 watt models and have to put them together, uh, I decided to go for a 200 watt model from uh, a Yuma model. So that's the reason I have this. Now, it has some unique features that set it apart from virtually almost, as, as far as I know, any other solar panel on the market. But it is a little bit specialized, and I'll get to why I say that in a minute. So to start with, let me just unroll this, and I'll give you a few details. Obviously, the single most unique feature of this is the fact that you can roll it up. Now, what's the benefit of having a solar panel that you can roll up? Well, you know, originally you might think this is great for storage or carrying in your car or something like that, but that's not what it's designed for. It's actually designed to conform to a surface and be installed there permanently or at least semi-permanently. So maybe you have a teardrop uh, trailer. This will conform to the curvature of that. Flat top trailers, it'll stay with that. If you're using it on a sailboat, power boat, you can use it there and it will adapt itself to any numbers of different surfaces. It also means that it's highly durable. It can, well obviously, it can take the flexing of 360 degrees um, wrapping it up. There's not another solar panel that I'm aware of on the market that can take that kind of, I wouldn't call it abuse, but it will allow it to do that. So it is an extremely tough panel, extremely durable for that reason. Now it has some other key features. First off is the technology that's built into the panel itself. This is absolutely cutting edge. SIGS, C-I-G-S. I'm not even going to try to pronounce what that acronym stands for, but I will be putting it in the video description. It is the most advanced solar panel technology that allows it first off to be as flexible as it is, but also uh, creates a very durable panel and one that can actually tolerate shade better than a lot of the panels can. Now, the other thing, of course, is if you're looking at this and you're thinking about using it for an RV, setup, which is the primary uh, uh, market for this, would be an RV of some type. This competes very well against the standard glass panels that would have a kickstand on the back that you would have to store, take out, and face into the sun, in that this is 70% uh, lighter than any of those panels are of a given size, 200 watts, and like 95% as thin. And of course, the other ones don't flex whatsoever. So it's an extremely lightweight, extremely durable, extremely efficient panel. So those are the things it has going for it. It also has the ETFE coating on the outside, which means it, you know, scratching it would be a real challenge. I mean, if you tried hard enough, you could. But you don't have to worry about being scratched from things falling on it or landing on it while it's on your vehicle or scratches from virtually just about anything short of actual physical abuse. It's not going to... Um, be damaged by that in any way. Now, it's a very simple device. It is uh, IP68 waterproof, simple in the sense that, you know, there's not there's not there's no controls on it or anything. Now, here's the thing. There are two models of the Yuma. 
Both of them have peel back sticky surfaces on them to help you adhere them to your trailer, conform to the surface. Uh, one model has grommets on given points that allow you the option of attaching it mechanically to the surface with screws, nuts, bolts, whatever. Uh, this is not that model. This one has strictly the peel back. I would have preferred the other only because it would have given me some options in terms of mounting it. Having said that, I don't think that's going to be an issue in terms of mounting. For me, this will have, well, I'll show you how I'm going to mount it in a few minutes' time. It's not something I would have considered prior to receiving it, but I think it will work out just fine for the use I have in mind for it. It may take some modification, which I'll mention when I get to that point. Now, I'm going to roll it over to give you a look at the back of this and show you what it looks like on the back. So, all of these black areas are peel and stick. So, I won't actually peel one off, but, or completely off, I'll start it if I can. There is a peel and stick material, clear plastic, and a very sticky surface underneath that will allow you to stick this on the surface so it adheres to it. Once that is done, it's not coming off. In, well, okay, it's not coming off unless you want it to come off. You don't have to worry about driving at highway speeds or any winds or water, rain, or anything else causing this to peel off of your RV, your boat, or whatever it is. It will stay on. Again, uh, with the, if you opt for the one with the mechanical attachment abilities, the little grommets, then you can further enhance that by screwing it down to whatever surface. But if you don't want to put screw holes in your RV, understandably, then you don't have to with this model. Actually, you don't have to with the other. You can rely with it and the sticky as well. All right, so as far as the physical dimensions, let me just roll it back over again. You know, I couldn't do this with any other flex, uh, any other panel handle it like this, right? Now, you do get a manual. I just wanted to point that out. The manual is done in multiple languages. It doesn't need to be as thick as it is for you. The, um, there's good information in here, but it's, uh, again, it's uh, in multiple languages. Now, as far as the key features, I mentioned 360 degree flexibility. It has a 10 year warranty. So, Bouge RV does stand behind this in terms of the quality and durability. And it's expected to last up to 25 years in use. Now, wait, this unit being the 200 watt unit comes in at 8.44 pounds, so it's not ultra light, but it's a lot lighter than any of the 200 watt glass panel panels would be. Now, dimensions wise, it is 82.2 inches in length, 26 inches in diameter, and you're ready for this, 0 0.06 inches in thickness. And that's what this is all about. Ultra thin, ultra compact, and as I mentioned, uh, very, very flexible. Okay, those are the key features for this. What I want to do now is set it up in the way that I'm likely going to be using it when I go car camping. All right, so as I mentioned, I don't have an RV at this time that I can do the best demonstration with, a teardrop or anything else that I can attach to this to. So what I'm proposing to use this or how I'm proposing to use this is on my car. So this is my Nissan Qashqai and uh, it has a nice flat roof. Now when we go car camping, we do put roof racks on for the uh, Thule bag on top and that type of thing. And I'm probably going to be using this in combination with the roof racks when I get to the park where I go car camping. I won't be leaving this on the car while I'm actually driving. Reason being is, well, the roof isn't big enough to be quite honest. There is an antenna sticking out of the back and I don't want to do a peel and stick and stick this down. Plus the Thule bag would be covering it up while it's in motion. So this will be something that I'll set up when I get to the campground on top of the vehicle and then I can remove it. Now, uh, in my experience of setting it up here in the driveway at home, it can be somewhat subject to the wind. If it's got a lot of breeze, it can pick it up. It is light enough that the wind can pick up and take it off of the car. So that's where I would have preferred to have the mechanical attachments, the grommets, so that not so I can screw it down to the car, of course, but so that I can use some type of a system of a cordage or uh, webbing or something to physically hold it to the car. So uh, that's why I'm probably going to have to do a few modifications to this. There's enough of a border on it that I can do that without interfering with the panel itself, with the, the uh, solar cells, and do that. So it, it'll still work out, and I think as long as it is uh, placed into the sun and it isn't exposed to 
hurricane or tornado force winds, it should stay on. So let me show you how I will probably be setting it up. Well, first thing I do before I do that is show you this. So the attachments are the MC4, standardized attachments almost every solar panel comes with. That allows me to use the cables for the different power stations that I have to attach to this. So that is great. Now there is one thing I want to talk about before setting it up only because I have the label right here and that is the uh, performance specification for this unit. So when you're choosing a solar panel, you need to match it to your power station. Now the power station I'm going to be demonstrating it with is one that I've been testing recently and recently reviewed. This is the Anchor Solix C1000 power station. Extremely capable, a lot of storage capacity and a lot of energy output. I'll let you go to that review to see more on it, but I think it's a good unit to demonstrate with. Likely going to be one of the ones I do take car camping with me when I go next year because of its capabilities. So um, that's what I'm going to be attaching it to. It has an MC4, sorry, XT60 input. So I have a cable that I can use. So this is MC4 on this end. XT60 on this end. So I'll actually I'll put it up on the roof first, then I'll attach it. So you do need to be aware of what the voltage capabilities of your power station is. Now, the so Anchor Solix C1000 can accept an, a, a lot of energy in from sources, up to 600 watts of solar power. So 200 watt will not come anywhere near to max, you know, what the this uh, power station can accept. If you're going to be putting two of or three even of these panels connected together in in series or in parallel and that can be just that was discussed in another video then you need to be aware of two numbers that will come with the solar panel the uh, max voltage and the max current so this panel is rated at 24 volts and 8.5 amps current so you multiply them together you get roughly 200 watts so when you're Putting panels together, you have to understand that if you put them in series, you get one thing. If you put them in parallel, you get another thing. They'll still come out to 200. Well, whatever combination of panels you'll get will still come out to the same wattage. But you have to make sure that your power station will accept either the voltage or the amperage or the combination thereof. I just wanted to point that out because I went through that exercise recently with a couple of other solar panels. However, having said that, this 200 watt panel and this power station perfect combination. I could actually add two more and get the maximum out of it. I just don't have anywhere to install them. All right, let's put this up on top of the roof of the car. I'll show you what that looks like, how it conforms to the roof. Now, this solar panel is long enough at 84, almost 85 inches to extend down over the roof of my car onto the windshield. So, and it's a good thing it is as flexible as it is. In fact, as it sits there for a moment, it's actually probably going to warm up and get even a little bit more flexible than it is at the moment. Now, I'll do the connections for the cable itself, the MC4. We'll connect those up. Bring the cable around and, yeah, of course, I put it on the wrong side. I will be moving the camera in closer so you can see what's going to happen once I put it in. So right now it is about noon. It is late September and I have perfectly clear skies. So this should be the maximum amount of solar I'm likely to get, certainly for this time of year. So let me, actually I'll bring the camera in before I even plug it in and we'll see how it, how much energy it's delivering to this power station. All right, I'm going to try and give as much shade as possible so that you can see the display when it lights up. I have the display turned up to its brightest, but still it's midday, so it can be a little challenging to see, especially on camera. I'll give it some shadow if it's necessary. So let's plug the XT60 connection in. And right away, the display starts to light up, going through its self-check. It will take a minute before it starts to register the amount of energy going in. And... I'm watching the number right down here on the panel, 44, and it's going to go 64. Yeah, the, it's warming up. Warming up's not quite the right word. The solar uh, power station is starting to register the panel on top and starting to build up. And so we're up to 119, 
seems to be leveling out at 119 watts going in. I'm just going to reposition the camera, the, the solar panel a little bit and see if I can't get it to climb a little higher. All right, I've repositioned the camera so it's laying up against one of the bushes in the front of my house. And this it really shows one of the shortcomings of a panel like this in terms of its versatility in that it really does require some type of a fixed structure in order to support it properly. As you can see, it's curving uh, over the bushes uh, as it would, of course, uh, being the flexible panel that it is. And you really need something behind it to hold it upright, hold it uh, flat if you want, and that is one of the challenges of using this type of panel. Any other uh, application other than affixing it permanently, semi permanently to the surface of a vehicle like an RV or a boat. All right, so what I'll do is I'll just bring the camera in closer to the power station. We'll see what kind of energy it's going to deliver now. All right, now it's going to be the challenge for you being able to see this, but let's give it a start. I'll plug the solar panel in. I'll try to give as much shade as I can to this. Hopefully it's bright enough that it is starting to show. It's starting to recognize the solar panel. Climbing, 65, 89, 117, 133, there we go, that's better. Better angle, 147. 153 and seems to be leveling off at 153 watts going in which is not bad at all that's quite a high percentage you never get a hundred percent and uh, but that's not bad at all now I'm going to do one test I have a piece of paper I just want to throw on the solar panel to see what kind of an effect it has in terms of shading because one of the claims for this panel is that it is quite shade tolerant. We know that it requires a very specific angle. Oh, and I should tell you this, uh, having tested this out here, there's quite a bit of pollen on it and dust. So that will have an impact as well as any cloud or any other obstructions. But let me just throw a, a piece of paper on and we'll see what that does to the uh, output. And I'm with the solar panel and it is quite windy and actually I'm using my body to block. I'm probably blocking 20-25% of it just with my body alone. In fact that's probably as good a test. So I can't see what the solar panel is producing right now but uh, it should hopefully it's showing up on camera. I will put a piece of paper, two pieces of paper, let's see as long as they don't blow away in the wind here, against the panel. Eight and a half by 11s. Let's see what that's done to the power delivery. Well, that it's reconfiguring. It's almost as if it's going around it. 101 watts, 102. So it is still delivering a significant amount of energy, even with a portion of it covered with those pieces of paper. So uh, yeah, still good performance, 101 right now. Not bad at all. All right, I think we have enough of a demonstration that we can wrap this video up. All right, a few closing thoughts on the Yuma Flexible Solar Panel from the company Bouge RV. So without question, this has got to be the most advanced solar panel of its type on the market today. I certainly, I'm not aware of anything better than this. The fact that it is 360 degree flexible, IPX8 waterproof, shade resistant to a degree, as you saw in the demonstration, very thin, very lightweight, very, very durable with a, quite a nice uh, warranty, 10-year warranty on it. I don't think that's going to be uh, easy to beat at all. I think that companies are going to have to go a long way to even match that. Now, as I mentioned, it does have very specific application. It's really intended for either permanently or semi-permanently being affixed to the top of some type of a structure, like on a, an RV, maybe on a teardrop trailer, maybe on a sailboat, powerboat, those types of things. Places where you're going to be putting it and you're, you're not going to remove it. And I think it's ideal for doing that. It's less than ideal for the application I have for it. It is working putting it on my vehicle, but as I mentioned, I'm gonna to have to make some modifications in order to keep it on my vehicle once I get to the location that I'm going to. Had I a larger vehicle with a flat roof, I may consider putting this on in a semi-permanent way, but honestly, that's not what I'm gonna be doing with it because it's not something I wanna leave you on there year round exposed to the weather. I just won't be making any use of it. So it is perfect uh, for the application it's intended for. It's a little bit less than perfect for the application I'm likely to use it for, but that in no way is a strike against this product. If you have a trailer or, or an RV or something 
something that you want to attach this to, then you this may be a good choice for you. So what I'll do, of course, is all the specifications that I'll be putting, not only the ones I mentioned, but all the additional ones that came with the, the uh, Yuma, I'll be putting them in the video description along with the link and the discount code if you are interested in purchasing this. If you have any comments or questions, please put those in the comments section below. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less travel because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.